my name is Colin McCann. I'm a writer originally from Ireland. I live now in New York. Uh, I've written over a dozen books and um, I've been a creative writing teacher on and off for 25, maybe even 30 years. Who knows? Uh, the stories, I suppose, knit the world together. Like the scientists will tell you that uh, the world is full of molecules and atoms and they're all moving and bouncing around but I think the world is held together with stories and they're all moving and bouncing around and we meet each other through stories so stories are about um, reconciliation they're about understanding one another they're about peaceful engagement in many in many forms they're about information they're also about disinformation sometimes too uh, story you have to be careful with stories stories can be violent things stories can be manipulated and uh, so you have to find a core of human honesty when you talk about stories. Do I think it's important to have models when I write? I think it's so important. We get our voice from the voices of others. Uh, the most important thing that um, a young writer can do is read, read, read. Uh, read the classics, but also read the contemporary stuff. Go into a bookshop and look around and flick open all the books and get angry and get upset and say, why is this published? I, you know, I, can, I can do better than this. Um, and then to, to, to develop your voice by, by um, you know, reading the great ones, whether it's Toni Morrison or James Joyce or whatever it happens to be. Um, so it's incredibly important to, um, to continue that engagement. And, and, and it also makes you feel that you're not on your own, um, that there's a whole history behind you. And there's a whole history that you can partake of as you go forward. I learned to write stories through my father. My father was a journalist and um, he also w was um, a writer. So the music of my childhood is the typewriter and coming from the shed at the side of the house. Um, and he, um, he wrote, he was a professional soccer player um, and he, um, he wrote kids, kids books about football. And um, so he gave them to me to read when I was a kid. And uh, I began to see these stories working. And, um, and so it was, odd for me when they arrived in the house as books because I just thought of them as bits of paper that were in the outside shed um, and that was the beginning of stories. I come from a country where stories are like, like incredibly important. Um, literature is very important, the writer is very important too. Um, and um, But I think that that should translate across all cultures. All cultures talk about the importance of stories and storytelling and learning it at a young age is a real privilege. Uh, the purpose of literature is to sort of open up your rib cage and surprise you. Uh, so it doesn't have to be necessarily, a, a, certainly not a linear story. It doesn't have to be a chronological story. In the end, everything becomes a form of story. So the answer might be that, that, that the purpose of literature is to tell a story. But I don't think uh, that we should necessarily be too conscious of the story that we have to tell. And besides, the story is not the, un not the interesting thing. It's how the story gets told that is more interesting. That's why we have creative writing. Um, anyone can tell a story. It's hard to write the story and to, 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 to show how it unfolds. It's all about language. Uh, so language to me is the most interesting thing. Break them, break them, break the rules. <laughs> there are no rules. I mean, there are certain things. Yes, you have to, you know, you have to spell the, T-H-E. In fact, no, you don't. You can spell the as D-E, if you want. Um, just, uh, no, you have to know the rules first, then you can break them. That's a good thing. You have to know, you know, the things about grammar and structure and all these things. Uh, you can't just go in and say, oh, I, you know, be anarchic about it. Uh, you, have to, you have to be able to say, the rules are important, but now I can break them because I know them. I don't care. Science fiction is as good as horror, is as good as like highbrow literature, is as good as poetry, is as good as journalism, is as good as playwriting. I'm not a snob. I think it, I, I don't like that at all when people think that, 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 that genres are wrong. Sometimes some of the best stuff will come uh, through genre writing. It's not about whatever genre you're in. It's all about the act of storytelling, telling a, you know, a story that, 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 that disrupts people and wakes people up and makes people think, great. If I meet somebody who's creating a new story, uh, it's all the better. I keep 
like waiting for these young people to come along and, and, and use the internet in new and fascinating ways, to use text messages in new and fascinating ways, not just the old tired ways. Yeah, it's always, you use lots of different forms. Use music, use video, use whatever you can. If you're going, you know, de depending on how you want to, to, to tell your story, it's always constantly evolving. It would be boring otherwise. Do I prepare my characters? No. <laughs> they prepare me. Um, I mean, but you have to know your characters. You have to know... Uh, eventually, you have to know everything about them. How do they cross at the traffic lights? Do, how long do they use the toothbrush? And, uh, you know, all these little things. The minor things contribute to the big things. Um, but, um, yeah, you get to know them first. Look, the thing about it is that, that, that people think that writers know what they're doing. Most of the time, writers don't have a clue what they're doing. You fly, as we say in English, you fly by the seat of your pants. I don't know if you have the same expression in France. You just, you do whatever you can do. You discover it as you go along. If you know it beforehand, it's most likely going to be boring. Um, but then you discover the characters, you excavate, you, 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 yeah. you go as deep as you possibly can. And then you be as honest as you possibly can with them too their flaws and all the, the good points and all the bad points and all the things in between. Yes, constantly rewrite. So um, I know some of this video is going to go to some, um, to some young people. So I can't say a bad word, uh, but you can bleep it out maybe. But, but my friend Alexander Heymon says um, very wisely, it turns out, but it's, it sounds silly. He, said, he says, it is all shit until it isn't which I think is one of the wisest things that you can say about writing. It is all bleep, 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 until it isn't. In other words, you have to work at it over and over and over again. Editing is, is, is where, where, where it all begins to, to, to happen. Nobody writes the first sentence and, uh, you know, and the second sentence and flows on through till the end. That's just not the way it happens. You have to work. It's work. It's good work, but, but you have to work. Okay, so this is an interesting question. Is it possible to teach writing? The, my very first lesson that I give to my students when I go in is that, um, you know, I can't teach you anything. And they look at me, you mean I just spent all this money to come to uh, your school and you tell me you can't teach me anything? And I say, well, yeah, but I, 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 you know, what I really mean is that unless you have the fire unless you have the desire, unless you have the stamina, unless you have the per perseverance, uh, unless you're ready to fail, you won't learn, uh, won't learn anything. So I don't, I'm not sure that I can teach how to do dialogue or characters or any of that sort of thing. I can talk about it, but it's not the same for everybody. You know, uh, everybody has a different way. Um, but what I can teach is, is fire in the belly, because if you don't have fire in the belly, then it's not going to happen for you. Yeah, well, they've got to read. I mean, if they don't read, it's useless. First of all, so they have to read. Uh, yeah, do I teach them how to read? No, I can't teach them how to read. I can teach them to think about certain ways of looking at the story and say, you know, why does that happen there? And why is that word placed there? And why is that, that sound this particular way? But the most important thing about this particular form of, of reading is that you must read your stuff aloud. Because the music of a story is for me, more important than the meaning. And I know some people think that's bizarre, but for me, music reveals more things than actual meaning itself does. So read it aloud. Now go around your house, you know, make your parents crazy, walk around and read your, read your story aloud. Say bad words. <laughs> well, what advice would I give to young authors? Much of what I've just said, read, read, read. Um, face the blank page. It only, it's only going to happen if you're there. So you can't pretend. Writing is not like dreaming about writing. Writing is actually writing. Writing is sitting down on your ass in the chair. Uh, you know, um, and sometimes you'll get zero words done per day. That you've still done a full day's work. Sometimes you might have minus a hundred or minus a thousand words. You've still done a full day's work. But you have to be there for it. Um, and um, be prepared for, um, you know, uh, a long haul. But, um, you know, when it happens, it is amongst the best feelings that you can possibly get uh, in, in, in life. Um, and then be kind. 
Be kind to yourself and be kind, in, in particular, be kind to others. Find yourself a little a writing partner and uh, be kind to her. Um, uh, that doesn't mean don't tell the truth. It, it means tell the truth in a kind way. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. Um, but um, uh, I don't, I mean, I put Seamus Heaney, I, I asked artificial intelligence to write a Seamus Heaney poem. It can't. Uh, and I have a secret feeling that it never will. And uh, that there will always be this, this beautiful part of, um, of, of the creative process that will outdo and outstrip the artificial intelligence that's there. Because real genius rises above uh, what has gone before. And artificial intelligence can only take everything that has gone before. Uh, so its accumulation is an accumulation of what has been there before. But true genius, true creative beauty will come about from somebody, a person, interrupting that. Um, and so I think, I think we're going to be okay.